What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Yuki M10 4K stream media mirror dash cam. Now, if you guys have seen my previous video, I've taken a look at the M11, which is the M10's older brother. And I've been using it ever since I made that video. So quite a long time, use it every day. You know, it just stays up here. Still haven't managed the wires in any way, shape or form. They just kind of hang out here, which looks terrible but I'm too lazy to do it. We're gonna be taking this bad boy off and taking a look at the M10 here and all that it has to offer. Let's go ahead and get it unboxed. So the packaging is very similar to the M11. It has a little sleeve that has some information on it. Reversing assistant, loop recording, HDR waterproof. I don't know why you'd need it to be waterproof. 4K resolution and a micro SD card. It has the Sony IMX335 GPS tracking, G sensor, parking monitor, and two cameras. So very similar to the M11. The only difference really is the shape and the size. So we got a nice thick cardboard box, some padding, and here it is, the M10. So it's got a nice little cover over it. It's got the same little sliding camera. Now the back of it is a little bit different. This is more of a kind of silver plastic versus just an all black plastic on the back of the M11. And then inside the box, we have a little bit more padding and then all the standard stuff that we saw on the M11. So you've got your backup camera that you can put on. You've got a GPS sensor, the micro USB type B cable. You got these little rubber attachments that allow you to attach it to any size rear view mirror that you have. It's super simple to attach. You just uh, take the little um, cover off of the camera, slide it out so that it fits your mirror, place it up here, and then you use these little rubber things, snap it over one side of the hook, up and under, onto the second hook, and the same on the other side nice and simple there and boom it's attached and then you can adjust the uh, camera so it's not sticking out too far anything like that get a little satisfying peel here and boom you got this beautiful cable action here looks nice you can run it obviously up along your eight pillars there i'm just not doing it for the sake of this video so we've got both cameras connected now and on the main screen up at the top you can see what resolution you're recording in you know, what the time's at in your recording, time and date, if your backup camera's connected or not, uh, if it's plugged in or not, and then you have the speaker button, the camera button, the record button, setting button, play button, and the lock button. Uh, and then on the sides, you have a little joystick, software joystick for moving your camera position up and down. And then on the right side, you have a brightness slider. So we'll go ahead and leave the brightness all the way up. If you hit the uh, microphone button, it's gonna turn off sound recording. If you hit the camera button, it's gonna take a screenshot or a photo. Do that right there hit the record button stop and start a recording and then the play button if you go ahead and go into this you can actually view your recordings so if you want to you know see if your camera caught something very easy to go in and view that so under the main portion it's a little microphone test too and you can preview those you can delete them a lot of management uh, stuff right there which is nice to have and then you can go look at your screenshots as well. Now your normal mode is just gonna be like your dash cam mode forward facing, but if you swipe over from the side, you can get a split screen view. So right now I can see my backup camera view and my uh, front facing view. And if I swipe over again, it'll switch the sides, swipe over again, it'll just give me the backup camera and I can adjust the angle uh, from there. So if you mainly wanna use this to watch people tailgate you or whatever, you can do that right from that. I do like that it can go into this kind of simplified mode where it just shows you the time and date and then your camera angle where it doesn't keep all the icons on the screen the whole time. The M11 does not do that as far as I can tell. So inside the settings, we have 4K resolution, but you can switch to 2K or full HD. You've got video segment length. So that is if you were to take the SD card out, put it on a computer, it would be how the videos are broken down. So you can do that in one minute segment, three minute segment, five minute segment. I'm gonna do five minutes, just how I prefer it. The G sensor is just reacting to the motion of your vehicle. So if you have a vehicle that's a little bit less sturdy, a little bit less stable, maybe turn that sensitivity down to low. But if you have a more of a smooth ride and you want it to really capture those impacted moments, which God forbid you have any of those, but you want it to do that, just change it to high. I'll leave it at mid. Parking guard, that's only available if you hardwire it to your car, which you can do, but you have to get an extra kit. It doesn't come with the wires for that. You can change the frequency, so 50 hertz or 60 hertz, depending on if you're in America or in the UK. You've got a boosting sound button on or off. You have a rear screen flip, so if you've got the uh, backup camera connected, it'll flip 
you know, one way or the other. English, we'll leave it at that. Change the date and time. Restore to factory settings. You can do wide dynamic range um, or not. We'll go ahead and leave that on. Now, like I said, the box also comes with a GPS sensor. So if you connect that, you'll get, you know, location data that can then be associated with your video footage. I don't really care as much about that. I've never installed the GPS unit, but you can. It comes with it right here and it's super easy to install. It has an adhesive so you could stick it up to the glass or something like that of your windshield. I just don't find a real use for it, so I haven't used it. And then, like I said, the rear view camera portion here has a super long cable. It can run easily all the way back to even a very long vehicle. And it comes with a couple different mounting options. It just has a little adhesive that you can use, and it also has a couple screws if you want to uh, you know, do something that's a little bit more permanent. And when it comes to weatherproofing on the box, the weatherproofing is referring to the rear view camera here, which is uh, waterproof if you want to stick it on the outside of the car near the license plate or something like that where your normal rear view camera would be. And it won't, you know, get damaged in the rain or mud or dust or dirt or anything like that. So in my last video about the M11, a lot of people asked me, how can I use this in a way where the rear view mirror portion of it is still functional? Because when the screen's on, you can either see, like I said, the front facing view, the rear facing view, or a split screen view. And when you're in any of those views, unless you have the rear camera set up in a place where it's in a, you know, a really good visible spot, it's kind of hard to tell what's behind you. And that's where the screensaver mode comes into play. If you set the screensaver mode to its lowest setting, which is just a minute, then you can get in your car, it'll start, it'll turn on, it'll start recording, and then after a minute, the screen will disable and you can use it, angle it down a little bit, and use it just like a rear view mirror to where you can see out the back and all that kind of stuff. All the while, it's still recording with the front camera and the back camera to the SD card, so you won't lose any of those incidents that may or may not occur while you're out on the road. So that screensaver feature is super clutch and allows this mirror to not only be smart and fully functional, but also dumb it down so that it works like your normal rear view mirror would. Let's go ahead and look at some video samples at the various resolutions that the M10 offers. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have been using the M11 since I made my review several months ago, and it's absolutely fantastic. I love the functionality of it. Since I already have a larger version of this, I am gonna be giving away the Yuki M10 Smart Rear View Mirror Camera right here. So if you guys are interested in winning this Smart Rear View Mirror Camera, drop a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm not gonna pick anyone that obviously isn't subscribed. Drop a like in the video, leave a comment down below letting me know that you want to win this camera and I'll be picking one person from the comment section at random and sending them this camera free of charge. So thanks so much for watching guys. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Again, drop a comment down below. I'm going to be picking one of you guys to win the M10 Smart Review Mirror camera here. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.